the new importing bans that will have a huge impact on vaping. So in short, if you vape, well, you're probably going to have to give up. And that in itself might put an added strain on our health system. So if you do vape, give me a call, one double three six nine three. Are you prepared to give up? Is it going to be every bit as difficult as it was when you tried to give up cigarettes, which is probably why you're vaping in the first place? Or maybe you vape because you think, uh, as the Brecky boys mentioned, it just looks cool. It doesn't look cool. So maybe you'll have to resort to the black market in a bid to keep the vaping going. So give us your views. And if you're not a vapor, do you applaud the bans? Because maybe you just can't stand the sight of uh, people vaping and that vape sort of flying in your face. One double three six nine three is the number. The email address, of course, mornings at 3aw.com.au. Dr. Colin Mendelson is a retired GP and the founding chairman of the Australian Tobacco Harm Reduction Association. He joins us on the line. Hello, Colin. Good morning, Tony. Well, first of all, what is the Australian Tobacco Harm Reduction Association? Oh, look, it was a charity that was developed and established in 2017 by a group of doctors to raise awareness of safer alternatives to cigarettes. So it's for people who can't quit, um, who, who are have a two in three chance of dying if they continue smoking, uh, who, for whom changing to a low risk alternative um, leads to dramatic health improvements, and vaping is one of those. So, so you, you're pro vaping? Well, I'm pro anti smoking, and the priority is always for people to quit smoking altogether from a health point of view if they can. The reality is, though, that the majority of people can't quit in spite of repeated attempts to, to, to do so. So harm reduction is all about accepting that's the reality and looking at ways of improving the health of those people. So rather than let them continue to smoke, offering them an alternative which is at least 95% safer. So you're, you're saying that vaping is 95% safer than actually having a well, cigarette? It's, it's, Absolutely. It's not just me, though, Tony. That's the, an officially uh, the, that, that statement's been um, assessed and, and validated by the Royal College of Physicians in the UK and Public Health England. So after why are we banning comprehensive it? reviews? Well, that's a very good question. Un unfortunately, in Australia, we've just got the regulations wrong. In, in the UK, in New Zealand, and in, in Canada um, and the US, they make vaping available as an adult consumer product like cigarettes. So you, if you smoke, you can go to a, a licensed retail outlet and say, look, I want it to switch to a safe alternative, and you, you can access those products. But kids um, have strict age verification requirements. So there are ways of restricting access to kids, but making it available for adults who want to reduce their harm. In Australia, we said, well, we think this is a threat to public health, and we're going to try and make it as hard as possible for people to access these products. We don't like the fact that kids are using them, but uh, and we think that's more important than helping adults to quit. But when you look at that argument on face value, it's pretty much line ball, isn't it? In what respect? How do you mean line ball? Well, in, in, and shouldn't we be doing everything to discourage kids from putting any sort oh, of we smoking in and, and I think, absolutely. And look, in other countries where they have these products that are sold from licensed retail outlets, um, sale to kids is, is fairly well controlled. There's always going to be some leakage. But if your licence for selling a profitable pop, prof, pop product is based on compliance with regulations, then breaching those regulations of selling to kids is clearly going to be a big barrier for you. But the problem we've got in Australia at the moment is that we've handed the sale of vaping products to the black market. The black market has no respect for age of sale or quality of products. They don't pay, ta pay any, any tax. And so kids can access these products freely. You, you just go to the corner store, buy it through social media. There are hundreds, thousands of retail outlets that sell these banned products. And that's why this, these new regulations, I think, are crazy because we're just banning a product that's already banned. It's illegal to bring these products in already and to sell them without a prescription and to sell them from anywhere but a pharmacy. They're already banned. And we're saying, well, we're going to ban them again, and that's going to solve the problem. Well, it's not. 
Um, the but it's going market... to curb. But it's but it's going to curb the problem, isn't it? I mean, not every well, not every you know sort of uh, wide-eyed, innocent fifteen-year-old is going to know how to access the black market, surely. Oh, they do. They they do. They very much do because all their kids, all their friends know about it. They talk about it. These products are available from thousands of retail outlets and through social media. So it's like chop and... chop when you go to the illegal tobacco stores. Yeah, exactly. It, it's you know we've created an environment. We've created incredibly high cigarette prices, so people can't afford them. So at least a quarter of our uh, cigarette sales, tobacco sales, are illegal through the black market. And over 90% of vapes are sold through the black market now. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and, which, yeah. And, and we know that you know, from experience that you cannot prohibit these illegal products. If people want to use them, we know from heroin and cocaine, uh, over 90% of IV drug users say it's easy or very easy to access heroin and and heroin was banned in 1953 you, you know the black market just steps up it has it's very well organized it's very profitable it'll find a way of bringing these products in but but, but based on based on your earlier comment about vaping is 95 percent safer than the mm. cigarettes but surely surely putting any form of chemical in your body is not good and it's got to be oh, more absolutely. than a five percent it's got to be more than a five percent risk well, actually, the evidence suggests otherwise. So when you burn a cigarette, you're creating 7,000 toxic chemicals, mostly generated by the combustion of tobacco leaf. And they're generally in high doses. When you vape, you're heating a liquid nicotine into an aerosol. There's generally about 100 to 150 chemicals. And according to Public Health England, they're mostly less than 1% of the dose of what they are in smoke. So there's a vast reduction in the number of chemicals and in the dose. So the, the, the expected um, harmful effect from that is much less. And that's what we see. We know that when people switch to vaping, they have dramatic improvements in asthma, COPD, their risk of heart disease, their lung function, respiratory symptoms. So we see the benefits. And, and we know, for example, that vaping is less than half percent of the risk of cancer compared to smoking. So there's dramatic reductions in risk. But it's still a risk. Oh, yes, yeah, still a risk. And it's not yeah. for people who don't smoke, and that's the point. Vaping is a safer alternative for adults who can't quit smoking. Yeah. And if you're not a smoker, you shouldn't be doing it. But oh, okay. having well, said that, the absolute yeah. risk is still very small. Yeah, well, I, I've... It just concerns me when you say stuff like that because, you know, if there's people listening at the moment that are sort of thinking to themselves, well, I wouldn't mind getting my hands on a vape, and then, you know, we're hearing that, hey, look, it's... You, I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't mean to be rude here, but you almost make it sound like it's healthy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, don't, no, look, don't, worry we, about your, don't worry about your fruit and veggies. Go and have a vape. No, no. Look, we, 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 there's no question. These products are not for non-smokers, and they're not for young people. Um, but... As far as kids are concerned, um, the fact is that kids are going to experiment. One, and if they don't, they're going to experiment with vaping or smoking. Uh, I'd much rather they experimented with vaping than smoking. And what we're seeing with in, in the younger populations in all countries is that as vaping rates go up, kids are smoking less, and the rate of decline in smoking is accelerating. So, it, vaping's a substitute for smoking. And yeah. as I say, we'd much rather kids do neither. But the kids are going to experiment. And vaping yeah. is a much safer alternative. Yeah, I get that. Um, all right, fascinating conversation, Colin. Thanks for your time. My pleasure. Thanks, Danny. Thank Bye. you, Dr. Colin Mendelson, joining us there. As I said, a retired GP, uh, founding chairman of the Australian Tobacco Harm Reduction Association. And uh, as you heard in, in his eyes, it, it is a much safer alternative. And, and I think we would all agree with that. But um, I think we'd all agree... Also, that vaping, if you're going to try and put a ban on it, maybe it needs to be eradicated altogether. But having said that, there would be valid arguments from people saying exactly what Colin was saying then. Look, I, I'm, I'm doing my best to give up cigarettes, but I, I'm not going to give up vaping. So tell us your views. One double three six nine three. Is it going to be every bit as difficult as giving up cigarettes? Are you going to resort to the black market? And is the black market for you know sort of young teens and kids in their mid teens uh, every bit as easy as going down the local milk bar? One double three six nine three. Rob's given us a call before we get to a break. Uh, good morning to you, Rob. Yeah, good morning, mate. That, that that fellow was an absolute revelation. He is absolutely spot on. I've done a lot of research now. I deal in the veteran community. What's going to happen to the hundreds? 
or thousands of veterans who have got off cigarettes and onto vaping. They're, they're boiling the ocean to get rid of one submarine here. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's going to push it un, underground. It's actually it's actually encouraged in the United Kingdom because they found exactly what that gentleman was saying is that it's pushed smoking rates down. And I mean. Uh, I remember when I was a young fellow, I used to go behind the bike sheds and experiment with smoking. Uh, there's nothing different. And he's quite right. There are regulations in play at the moment which uh, prohibits people under 18 buying uh, buying vapes and cigarettes. So what, what are we doing? We're just going to force an underground. I'm a vapor, and I was smoking. I smoked for 55 years, and I now vape. Uh, and the headline last week was there was 20 people last year admitted to hospital from vaping. 20. How many thousands were in hospital as a result of smoking, uh, mm. illegal, with smoking legal tobacco? It is absolutely ridiculous. So, Rob, just uh, quickly, all... have, you, have you already done your homework as to where you're going to get that now on the black market? Look, I've got a prescription. I, I, I can get it. And it is readily available to get a prescription. What's going to happen, though, is the prices of these particular uh, yeah. uh, vaping things for people who have got prescriptions is going to be totally prohibitive. It's going to be regulated by doctors who are going to be reluctant to issue them. So, you know, okay. the older people, the veterans and whatever, are going to totally miss out here because they won't be able to afford it or get All right, it. Rob. Or, or, yeah. All right, no, good on you, mate. Thanks very much for your call.